Nancy Meller here. How are you? Okay, you may be wondering what's going on here. This is my mother, Josephine Christensen, and her birthday is coming up. She will be 86 years old, and we were talking about what to do for her birthday. She lives in Ohio. I live in California. So it's not like I can stop by and take her to dinner or something like that. And as we were talking about it, we thought, what a great way to commemorate her 86th birthday than to talk about um, what we've done together as mother and daughter. And then before you say, oh, well, what's why would I care about that? If you're not familiar with our story, let me give you a little bit of a backstory. So my childhood was full of mental abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse that escalated to sexual abuse by the age of 12. So you can imagine that I was a very um, sad child, you know, in a lot of pain and um, trauma filled drama every day, every day of our lives. So I graduated and two weeks later moved out, got married, and was out of the house. So from the time I left the house, um, my mom and I were pretty much estranged our whole life. It was me trying to figure out how to avoid her as much as possible and yet deal with daughter guilt, you know, like, oh, but she's my mom and I should, I should feel this way, but I don't. What's interesting about this is to understand what each of us was looking for. I was looking for not having to feel obligated. And she was looking for love, wanting to feel like she mattered. So when you have that dichotomy in a relationship, what do you do? And the way our family was, you know, my mom is full-blooded Italian, 100% Italian. And so it was, you know, our way not to talk about things, uh, keeping secrets, not letting people know what's going on in our lives. But everyone in the household had their their needs. And if their needs weren't being met, you know, we create our beliefs in childhood between the ages of birth to eight years of age. So when you're a child, and I'm going to talk about myself only, and you feel like, you know, you're not loved, you're not wanted, you feel like you're going to be punished every time you turn around, you can never do something right. Um, it's a very fearful way to live your life. So, you know, fast forward, fast forward uh, years later. So let me give them a little backstory, Ma. And um, fast forward a little bit. Um, my husband of 32 years said he wanted a divorce. And lo and behold, my mom gives me a call. And she says, is it true what I hear that you're getting a divorce? And I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, like, yes, but I don't want to deal with you, too. And her next words really surprised me. She said, Nancy, please let me be there for you. I've never been there for you your whole life. You're going to need someone in your corner. Please let me be there. Well, I didn't really know what that meant. I really didn't know what to expect. But in 2017, um, I wrote my one of my my second book. I published my second book. And in it, my mom and I both shared our story. Uh, at the beginning of the book, I share a little bit about my childhood and what it was like. And then my mom shared her story in that book. And the reason that we did that book together was because I could only see our relationship and my life and how things went based on my needs and if they were being met and how I viewed life and our family situation. But then when you read my mom's story, you really understand why she parented the way she did. And it's not to condone the way she parented, but this is about understanding. This is about a way to practice non-judgment. And because of that, that, that book came out in 2017. And now here we are again, let's fast forward a little bit. And she's going to be celebrating her 86th birthday. So here we are now, because it's one thing to put something out there in public and say, oh, we did this together. But it's also nice to follow up, right? Seven years later and say, um, well, yeah, but what are you guys doing now? So does, what does that mean? Was it all, you know, fun and, you know, roses and happy, happy times or, and 
we will both tell you that no, it was actually like this. But when my mom was being there for me, and and uh, just to be honest, we want to say this is what it looked like for my mom when she says, I want to be there for you. Probably for the first few months, she would call me on the phone and she'd say, you doing all right? And I'd be like, yes, I'm fine. She's like, okay, just checking on you. That was her way of being there for me. So maybe where I was at that time, you know, I was wanting more. But again, people can only give of themselves what they have to give. So then going forward a little bit more, my mom started to watch what I was doing. And she she said to me one day, she goes, Nance, I see what you're doing with all these women. And I see how you're really changing their lives by sharing your story and talking about things. And do you think what you're teaching others might work for you and I? So it's not like I took her on as a client, but we had different kinds of conversations and opened up more. And then things happened in our family where um, I went back there and was sequestered with her and her husband during COVID. So that was another opportunity for us to really deepen, deepen our relationship, but also it kind of broke it wide open. So again, here we are celebrating her birthday in a few days. And before I just keep talking, 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 mom, I just want to set a little bit of backstory. So now you raised your finger, you wanted to say something. So what are your thoughts on all of this? Growing up, uh, I was, I was always so afraid of everything. So, so scared. Uh, I don't know if it came from uh, my childhood. And I was so afraid. I was the mother, but you weren't afraid. And so we clashed. And so, <laughs> but I never could get it through my head that you seen things and could teach me. I wasn't ready for it. Yeah, of course. I and wasn't I ready for it way back when you were in a, a senior and and it was kind of hectic for us well our our home life was tumultuous let's say that yeah. there were a lot of ups so and downs we clashed very much yes well and the interesting thing um about this and i think that this is going to be helpful for any person looking to maybe create a, a different kind of relationship with their parent or their child. It's about understanding that we can't possibly know what's going on in someone else's mind. We don't know what their fears are. We don't know what their hopes and dreams are. Even if they tell us their fears and their hopes and dreams, they're only saying what they want or feel comfortable to say out loud. So the fact that when you say you were scared, go ahead. But when, but through the years since you, um, you were read and you retain what you read and you worked, kept climbing, um, progressing, I should say. And we just came to this point. And I, th I think it's, I think it's so wonderful. And your kindness, your, your kindness to, um, not not condemn and the and the positive thinking positive thinking of faith faith that god is going to be there if we keep the faith positive thinking and i like that very much well because it's easy for us to in your words lose faith it's easy for us to say I'm going to think the worst about something because I'm used to the worst happening. And instead of turning our thoughts around and thinking the best. And when you say you were always afraid, you know, it makes perfect sense because there, I and my four other siblings, there are five of us. There are things that we wanted to do, maybe things that we had, but your world was kept very small 
because you were so fearful based on the relationship that you had with our dad. And he was a very um, sadistic, mean, um, uh, person to be feared. And <laughs> yes, yes. And the thing is, is that um, we know now, you know, years later, there's a, a name for some who he was. He was very much a narcissist and a sex addict. But those categories, labels, words weren't really something bandied around in the 60s and 70s. And so mm -hmm. you don't realize <laughs> that, oh, there actually is this word that we can put to it rather than believing it's all in our head. So you having five children, not working outside of the home and feeling trapped, uh, trapped between what you had to do as a mother, what you were forced to do as a wife and everything in between, it's no wonder that you were feeling very fearful. And of course, us children, all we could do was feel your fear, but that fear made you very angry and volatile. And going forward, you know, you you understand like, oh, this is where this was coming from. And again, it's not to condone your parenting, but I really want to express how important it is for anyone who's going through or has been through um, a traumatic relationship with one or both of their parents to understand that we can't possibly know what their thoughts, fears, secrets, and inner workings of the mind are for them. So all we can do is step back and view it from our perception and create a belief that explains it. Well, it must be this. And most of the time as children, we dump it on ourselves and we think, I'm not lovable, I'm not capable, I'm not worthy, um, and everything in between. And because of that, we bring those beliefs with us into adulthood. And if we are unable to heal that wounded inner child, we will keep that cycle going. And it's always about, you know, well, I feel this way. And so you want to blame outside sources when actually um, it's the inner work that we're being given the opportunity to do. And mom, I, I want, one of the things I really want to say in this is that I really love and appreciate your openness, your candor, and your willingness to appreciate my work. Because when I talk about things that went on in my childhood, you don't get defensive. You don't try to, um, I don't know, explain things away. You don't get angry. You know that this is part of the journey. And I think what's really beautiful about it is you don't take it as something that's being said to blame you for anything because you know it's not. Do you agree with that? No, you're right. There is no blame because uh, if if someone does it maliciously, that's one thing. But when you do it in honesty, <laughs> thinking that you're doing the right thing, but you weren't, but in later years, you can talk and realize that what you were doing wasn't right, but, and if you have remorse, if you have uh, repent or remorse, um, I, I think that's important, important. And that's working together also. Well, and of course, remorse, um, you know, what is your definition of remorse? Oh, you feel sorry that, that uh, I'm so sorry. It was unbelievable. Uh, you, 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 when I look back, yeah, it was, it was, uh, 
very hard, very hard. Well, and um, sometimes that can bring siblings closer together or it can pull siblings apart. Um, and we each have dealt with it in our own individual way. Um, we are all walking this path of adulthood based on how we have or have not chosen to heal our wounded inner child. And also how we have chosen to heal or not heal our wounded inner child, it makes a difference in the relationship that we have with you. Um, and so what do you think, mom, knowing like everything that we've talked about over the years and, you know, we've, we've worked together to understand where each of us is coming from and um, express how we care about each other and the mutual appreciation for what each of us is experiencing in our life. How has, how have things shifted for you or changed for you? Like, how do you see life now versus how you saw life? I don't know. Let's just say 30 years ago. Well, life is so much better now. Well, for, for right now is because, I'm alone and I have time to think and I ha and I have no interruptions. I mean, I am controller of my life now and I just feel that I'm at a good place now. But when I look back, I feel bad that I didn't have time for you children. I didn't have time. And that, that bothers me. But there's nothing we can do about that. Well, I understand that you have beliefs about what's expected of a woman as a, as a woman, as a homemaker, as a homeowner, as a mother. Um, but what would you have, what advice or words of wisdom would you give a woman who's struggling with trying to forgive herself for the choices she made in the past or trying to come to terms with um, choices that she made would want her life to be different. What, what, um, what advice would you give her? Just to never give up, just to keep going and uh, just doing the right things. Just, I don't know, just never giving up. You have to have family time. You have to have, you have to have a family. Without family, uh, there's really nothing. If, if you, you have to have family, you have to have church family. But what does that mean to you? You have to have family because, being very transparent, there are five of my siblings. Our my youngest brother is in a nursing home with severe traumatic brain injury, so we don't or not able to communicate with him. One of my brothers has passed away and my other two siblings um, really don't communicate with either of us. So with, that's our immediate nuclear family. So when you say you have to have family, um, that's not the case with us. No, and we, it didn't happen with us. And that's a shame. It didn't happen with us and, and uh, that that's, the one thing that I regret the most, uh, I felt I could have done better at that, but I didn't. I I didn't. But I don't know how we could have changed that. In 2017, when I published my second book, I remember, Mom, I remember asking you, uh, hey, mom, I think I know what I want to talk about in my next book. And we were Skyping so I could see your face. And I said, I think I want to share your story in the book so that people understand it's not just about my point of view. It's also about your point of view, too. And I remember very clearly you were looking down and you said, absolutely not. And then you kind of went, and you morphed and you said, yes, yes, I can. If you can do it, I can do it. And you shared your story in the book. 
so other than me fixing the grammar and asking you about timelines, everything is in your words. So since that book came out in 2017, um, would you say that everything was perfect between you and us, you and I between there, between now and then and now, or um, did we still have some work to do? And the reason I'm asking this question is because I want to be very transparent. I want people to know you don't just say, oh, everything's going to be hunky dory. And then there, there will never be ups and downs again. So after the book came out and we were talking and you were watching what I was teaching, would you say everything was perfect after that? I wouldn't say perfect, but it sure is, is, uh, uh, growing, growing and getting better and better each time, each day. And I'm so thrilled about that. I just, uh, so, so absolutely thrilled. Um, and it's exciting to watch your progress every day and meet these new ladies through you and and uh, and see your work. Mom, what do you think happens to families when secrets are kept in the family? Like, because you know there are there's so many movies out there where you know you discover or and books and movies and and things about where women have to keep this secret at all costs and even at the cost of others because they feel whatever it is they feel or believe whatever it is they believe um, will happen or not happen if their secret gets out. And it could be, you know, a secret of having a child out of wedlock or. Um, I'm, I'm reading a book right now. I'm finishing it up and it's, it's, it's so good. I can hardly put it down. So. It's um, it's interesting. People, people are interesting. What do you think happens when we're forced to keep secrets in the family? What do you think happens around that? Well, it's not good. It's um, it's it's not healthy. It's keep secrets. I mean, but when you grow up, you it it has to start from the beginning to bond, to bond, because I see the, the family I, I'm around now is, is so wonderful and bonding and, and uh, they show great love for each other and respect for each other. And, um, and, and it's great. It's great. So you feel um, relaxed and able to be part of that family, which is your uh, late husband's family that you're talking about. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. So you notice a difference in being part of that family versus the family we grew up together in. Yes, because it's, it's makes a great difference. How you grew up, but of course all families can't, it just doesn't happen to do that, but it, um, when there's respect for each other. Yeah, and how do you think that happens in families, having respect for each other versus animosity or competition? Love, there's love, great love. I wished I would have uh, shown more love to my children, um, great and understanding, except, <laughs> except the way I was taught. And the way I was taught was, uh, I was with my father continuously and all the time. And I took on his thoughts and actions. And that's not the way it, I should have taken on my mother's side. But <laughs> anyway, we... It, it all starts from a lot of love, a lot, lot, lots of love. You know, there's a saying that we marry one or both of our parents. 
meaning we find a partner who has a lot of um, mannerisms, like one or both of our parents. Would you say that was true in your case? I would think so. Yes, he was he was demanding and I just went along with it um, because that's what I did when I was young and at home. I just listened and 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 went along with it. I I obeyed as my mother did her husband. I obeyed. And that's the way it turned out. Well, you know, and in the 60s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, there were no places for women to go to for help. You know, there no. was no speaking out or reaching out or no. looking for that. Um, so I, I, I would think that in that era, women who were living a life that they really didn't want to live felt very alienated and there was no hope. Like, well, what are you going to do? Like, this is life. What are you going to do? Would you agree well, with I'm that? like you. I had no mother-in-law to lean on, not whatsoever. Hmm. And, you know, it's, it's like we're always looking for that other person to guide us or <clears throat> give us what we think we haven't been getting. Um, how are you getting that now? How are you getting that love and nurturing that you were always searching for? By by giving it out and it comes back to me. Fantastic. So, so many ways, yes, by giving out lots and lots of love and it's coming back to me I love a little it. late but <laughs> so in your 86 years of wisdom what would you what words of wisdom would you share with women today who are maybe struggling with parenting challenges or the relationship with one or both of their parents um or even with their in their marriage or relationship what what would your words of wisdom be? I, I, I don't know, Nancy. I don't love, 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 lots of love. I think that's perfect. I think you said it perfectly because what we give out, what we send out, exactly. we get back. Right. Yeah. Lots of love. Which is and, what you give out. I see every day you give out, whether it's meeting new people. Uh, your exuberance to people is just uh, amazing to me. And, I, and I'm excited about that because I see it. Mm, Lots of love. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> would, would you agree that you can't you can't expect something from someone if you're not willing to give it to yourself first? Love being that something. You have oh, to absolutely. love absolutely. You have to love yourself. Yes, yes. You have to love yourself. I I, I don't know how people find themselves, but they do if they can. Well, I think the conversations that we've had over the last however many years, 14 or so years, um, that as you, it was your habit to say, I'm sorry for doing this. I should have done this. I wish I would have done something different. But through our conversations, I was always reminding you that you did what you did knowing what you know and now that you know differently you can make different choices just like Maya Angelou said um, you know people may not know or may not remember what you say but they'll remember how you made them feel and right, right, exactly you can't make someone feel loving 
in your presence if you're not loving yourself. And what I've seen through our conversations is you're being more accepting of who you are as a person, as a woman, as a mother, grandmother, great grandmother, great great grandmother. <laughs> always make someone feel great because they'll they'll always remember that. No matter you don't know if they're having a bad day, a good day, or or what's on their heart, but if you treat them with kindness and love, that'll mean a lot to them. Always remember them. Yeah. And it's important that we give that kindness and love to ourselves first. So when we're constantly chastising ourselves or feeling guilty about choices we made in the past, that's not being loving to ourselves. And I, I again, not wanting to put words in your mouth, but that's what I see between the conversation in the in the conversations that you and I have been having over the years. It, it's about acceptance of self, continual acceptance of self. Right, right. It's love yourself. Yeah. Well, mom, thank you for sharing your time with me. Happy 86th birthday. Hey. I'm excited and it's gonna be pretty fabulous to see what we do in the next 20 years, right? Right, right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. And for all of you watching, I hope that this um, conversation between my mom and I might give you an opportunity when you're being really hard on yourself to remind yourself, how are you loving you? And if you don't know how to answer that, really sit with that question. And love yourself first. There you go. In the meantime, this is Nancy Muller. Saying ciao for now. Ciao for now.